Hey, good morning. All right. <laughs> amazing, amazing verse, amazing revelation here. Uh, it's just so beautiful what he's saying. He wants all of us to come home. He really does. He wants all us to come home. And I know I keep saying that, but I know that's the intent of his mind, that none should perish, that all should come into the light. So I'm going to get right into this verse. It's a, I don't want it to be too long. It's a beautiful verse. It's a First, I'll read this verse the way most of us will see it in our Bibles. And then I'm taking every word back to its origin using the lexicons because it was written in a pictographic language, Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Pictographic languages, he preserved his word, but you cannot see it through the translation of man. I mean, you could get the overall picture is oversimplified. They did a decent job, but men couldn't understand it. And that's why in Daniel 12, he said, the words of these books will be locked up till the time of the end when knowledge is increased and people run to and fro. And only Jesus Christ himself is worthy, the Lamb of God, to break that seal. Satan's put over you by your flesh to open your mind and your heart up to receive his Holy Spirit. And then he, he reveals the truth of the scriptures to you when you study it. The, the thing is, do you want to know? And the, and the problem is the churches have taught things that were taught by man for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years that aren't quite, quite right. Not quite when it comes to our body in this world and what it is. Our bodies in this world is the strong delusion. It's the strong delusion. That's why it's the strong delusion. It's so strong that mankind can't even accept it. They can't even understand it unless you're born again of the spirit. Then you can clearly see it. He heals your blindness, heals your deafness, and then you can see spiritual truth. And, and you're only given uh, the amount of the Holy Spirit the, the, of knowledge and truth, the gift of knowledge and truth uh, in, in a quantity uh, that, that's directly related to your heart and mind coming into an agreement with his Holy Spirit, with his word, because he is the word. He is the truth. You know, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You know, I mean, he... He's all that, you know, and you're only given that gift in, a, in the quantity that directly relates to the amount of agreement you come in with his spirit. But and there's certain things that men just refuse to let go of. And the main teaching is the strong delusion that we're being taught a strong delusion in church of what our bodies are and what this world is. It's not right what we're being taught by men. Here's the Holy Spirit revealing the truth clearly in this verse. And it gets very detailed too. So it's a beautiful thing. So this is Jeremiah 33, 11. And I'll read it the way we'll see it in our Bibles and take every word back led by his Holy Spirit using lexicons, strongs, and all that. Okay, so Jeremiah 33, 11, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, for I will cause to return the, the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. There we go. So it tells you what was going on and before we were taken captive, because this verse says we're returning from a captivity, okay, by the voice of the bridegroom and, and the voice of uh, the bride and how good the Lord is. So this is great. Jeremiah 33, 11. Now, I mean, could you really even understand that verse reading it as this? I mean, do you get it? I mean, this is why you have to study. But the only reason you, you'll study is if you want to know the truth. You have to want to know it. It's all about free will here. We've been all given free will. That's how we ended up here. And he knew that. He knew that. That's why he, he manifested himself in a physical form to come into this system to get us back, to pay the price for our transgression, our sin, so to take us back home, to show us the way. All right, so here we go. Jeremiah 33, 11. To be called out by the sound of an instrument of joy and exaltation. That's a, a welcoming uh, to be bright and to rejoice by a proclamation of a thundering voice of gladness and making the heart merry by the voice of the bridegroom. There it is. To contract affinity. And I thought that was odd to write that, but he wanted me to write that. To contract the affinity of a, by a marriage proclaiming peace of a bride. Now, uh, affinity means by a relationship of similar characteristics, especially by a resemblance by the same life-giving spirit. We are not, we do not resemble, we're in direct contrast to God when we're born into this flesh. We are spiritually dead. 
with in death that we live in the abode of the dead. Uh, our body is a vessel of light and darkness, a state of duality, a separation from God. That's why we have to be born again of his spirit, grafted back into the main vine of the tree of life through Christ. So there's that. So by a marriage proclaiming peace of the bride as if perfected and made complete, answering the call in one's heart, plainly, that's uh, able to be perceived simply and clearly and manifestly free of falsehood, free of falsehood to confess the name of God and give thanks for stretching out his hands on that cross, paying the price for our sins. So stretching out of his hand of power and strength, an open hand of direction and fellowship with him, Jehovah, Yahweh, the self-existent eternal, one true God who came into existence to establish his word, to accompany you as a, to accompany us, all of us, as a beacon of light, his word, Christ, who is the word incarnate, who is God incarnate, as a beacon of light, committed to break the cause of the fall. That's what we did. We fell. We are all Elohim. Psalms 82, 6. I have said you are all Elohim, children of the most high God, but you have fallen like one of the princes and now you will die like a man. So understand that. So to break the cause of the fall. And here it is, to have existence, that's the cause of the fall, to have existence because of lusting after a body, bodily appetites. Okay, so now let's go back a second here. It says, God who came into existence to establish his word to accompany you as a beacon of light, committed to break the cause of the fall of the angels, to suffer hardship as going out to war, to wage and fight and serve at a sacred tent, our tabernacle, our temporary dwelling place, our body of the one true God when we're born again of his spirit, good and understanding, full of grace and joy and loving kindness and mercy, making supplication to abide in us and rest in a tent, a tabernacle, a temporary dwelling place of our tabernacle, of our body, All right? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the living God? Understand what he's saying here. To bestow grace and favor for eternity, something that was veiled from sight, concealed from the blind dissembler. And a dissembler is a person who professes beliefs and opinions that he or she does not actually hold in order to conceal their real motives. A hypocrite, a phony, a pretender. Okay, so... This is hidden from the blind in a dissembler that that falls by an attack from the enemy and they will fall by the attack of the enemy. They're deceived. They're complete. They believe the strong delusion. They're completely deceived. So they fall by an attack of the enemy. They are struck down. Now he says, confess your sin and give thanks to the Lord God. Cast down the strength and power of a phallus, of a phallus. And we know what that is. Uh, a human body of the abode of light and darkness, a receptacle, which is an object used to contain something of a family. So it's a receptacle of a family of descend, descendants on the inside, on the inside, this family of descendants who have descended, who have fallen, who have came down are on the inside, rebuild and be established, rebuild by a rebirth of our soul, of spirit, by the Holy Spirit, rebuild and be established of restored exiles. So we're exiles from somewhere. This is not our home. We originated in heaven. That is our home. That's where why Christ came here to bring us back again, back into a spiritual connection with the tree of life, with God himself, with the Father, who Christ is God incarnate. So he's done that. He loved us that much to do that. Okay. Be rebuilt and be established of restored exiles. Children of a concubine is what we were, who have sold ourselves into slavery. Jehovah, the self-existent eternal one, true God, one true God. Understand that. Turn back and return. Turn back and return. So we're rebuilding this relationship we had with Jehovah, Yahweh, the one true God, by turning back to return from a dying spiritual relation Turn from the evil of an inanimate thing. That's this flesh. It's, we're born into death, not life. Like the churches teach. We're, teaches, churches teach we're born into life and that's when we become a, a being. No, no, we, we already existed. But our memory's been wiped. Look at that 
when Adam was, uh, in, I forget, is Genesis 2 or 3, was put into a deep sleep and uh, Eve was taken from his rib. It means stupefied. We didn't gain knowledge. We lost knowledge. Okay. We were lied to and deceived. self external one truth. Turn back. Return from a dying spiritual relations. Turn from the evil of an inanimate thing. Be restored and refreshed. Return to the starting point, to our starting point, our home, our origin, a place of origin. Return to our starting point. Rejoice to return home again. Again, to return home again. Go back. Deny yourself of what hinders the captives that are in exile. Concretely prisoners from a former state of prosperity. We had a former state of prosperity that were taken captive and we were taken captive of the earth as opposed to the heaven. Princes of El, Israel, princes of El. We are the princes. You have fallen like one of the princes. We were the princes of El that inhabited the land of promise, right? We inhabited the land of promise. The first place before time, the first place before time from the beginning, the upper top of a mountain by the height of the stars that were shaken acting proudly in one's heart, challenging the commandment of God, of Yahweh, the one true living God. We challenged his commandment. We've broken the first. If you've broken one, you've broken them all. It means if you've broken the first, we, we wanted this body. We wanted to indwell it, which is an idol. We committed uh, spiritual fornication by indwelling an idol, becoming our own God to go our own way, straying from the straight and narrow way. When we were birthed into this world, we were birthed into death, not life, like the churches teach. We are birthed in a separation, a condition of separation from God. We've been separated from our place of origin, our home. We're exiles. From where? From above. We are all the Elohim who have went astray, like sheep being led to the slaughter, like the prodigal son who left his father. That's all us. It's all us. It's beautiful. Just read all the parables that Jesus, he's talking about straight about us. Do you have eyes to see? Have you been awakened yet? Have you been born again? Are you restored to him? It's a beautiful thing. I'm going to end it here. God, I don't want to get too long. So it, it's there. there's some clear revelation in that verse. And the next one he gave me is amazing too. I mean, it's just amazing. And I I'm being taught directly by God. And look, I've studied my Bible and went to church forever, you know, ever since I was a little kid, you know, and I was never taught these things. And now I'm finally like come before the Lord with a child, you know, as a child with a humble heart, willing to learn from him. And he's teaching me. He's leading me, guiding me and directing me. And what I'm saying here, these words that are in the, the pictographic languages, he preserved his word. It's the truth. And it's all through the Bible from Genesis to Revelations and every every single chapter of the Bible, every single chapter, every single book. So if you say I'm mistranslating or misreading something, good luck with that. Good luck with that because it's it's all through there, all through there. Just look for yourself. Look for yourself. Do you want to know the truth? The strong delusion, our bodies, what we've been told they are and what this world is to keep us here to hold us down, to hold us back, to make us fear death and fear all the things and keep our mind distracted by all these things of the flesh. Be set free. Let's go home together. All right. You're all my brothers and sisters out there. We're all one family of one kingdom. Let's go home. Let's go back home. It's about to happen. You want to go. Believe me, it would be hell on earth if you're not. If you don't get to go and you most likely will, if you take a stand for Christ, most likely you're going to be put to death just like the early Christians were. So understand that you don't want to be left behind. Um, and, and, and you will no longer fear death. Once you know the truth, you just you look kind of look forward. Well, you do, you look forward, you know, but we have a job to do while we're here. So let's do that job and scatter seeds. All right, God bless. Have a great day. Bye.